I'm uh, General Mohinder Puri, and uh, I had the privilege and honor to command 8 Mountain Division during the Kargil operations. Now, following the military crackdown in East Pakistan in March 71, over 1 million refugees poured into India. The government of India decided in April 1971 to go to war to stop the genocide and to enable the refugees to return to their homes. However, General Manik Shaw, the chief of army staff who later became the field marshal, had persuaded the government to postpone the offensive till the Indian army was fully prepared. Thus, the preparations including acquisition of equipment from Russia and other countries, development of infrastructure at the proposed launching areas, mobilization, training, dumping of ammunition, ordnance and engineer stores had commenced immediately. A Mukti Behni had been raised from the officers and men from the East Bengal Rifles and other paramilitary forces, trained, equipped to wage irregular warfare against the Pakistani forces in East Pakistan. By December, Indian forces were concentrated and ready to launch operations for the liberation of Bangladesh. They were also successful in provoking Pakistan into launching an offensive in the western sector on December 3rd. Now the operation, just to give you a broader view of the operation, four corps was the one which was operating in the south and southeast. Four corps was commanded by General Sagat Singh. Southwest, the thrust was led by two corps, which was commanded by General Tapi Rayana, who later on became the chief of the army staff. And from the north, from the Siliguri corridor, was 33 corps under General Thapar who later on was the vice chief of the army staff. Now, fourth core sector provided the shortest approach to Dhaka, which was only 80 kilometers from Agarthala. Four core task was to liberate all Bangladesh territory east of Meghna River. The core was also tasked to cut off the road and rail link to Chittagong, which is the most important port in Bangladesh. Most of the military supplies coming from Pakistan and abroad came through Chittagong. Four Corps had three divisions to carry out the task. Eight Mountain Division was in the north, 57 Mountain Division in the center, and 23 Infantry Division was in the south. Silet Town was located at the northern end of the sector and was connected to Dhaka by both road and rail. Eight Mountain Division under Major General K. V. Krishna Rao, who later on became the Chief of the Army Staff and Governor of JNK, was responsible for operations in this area. There were some preliminary operations in the sector. It was considered necessary to capture the Kareem Gun Bulge, which was a hotbed of Pakistani saboteurs and a source of interference to the building up of to the build up of Indian forces. To achieve this, it was necessary to capture Adgram and Zaki Ganj and the area east of the road connecting these places. Adgram and Zaki Ganj were held by a company each of 31 Punjab and Razakas. The enemy position at Adgram was based on the Surma River. The task was given to 59 Mountain Brigade under Brigadier Quinn. Four or five Gurkha rifles of the brigade was given the task along with one East Bengal Battalion and one field company of 108 Engineer Regiment. The battalion was able to cross the river and assault boats provided by the field company undetected by the enemy. There was heavy fighting and eventually the Kukris came out and most of the enemy was wiped out and a large amount of arms and ammunition was captured. The defenses at Zaki Ganj consisted of, were based on the Kosharia River. The attacking force consisted of nine guards and two companies of 87 BSF battalion. The attacking force while crossing the river in assault boats was detected and fired upon. Lieutenant Gopala Krishna of the engineer platoon in support of the battalion quickly changed the site of crossing and assaulting troops were able to cross the river undetected. After a fierce battle, Zaki Ganj was captured. A group called E-Force had been formed with 5-5 Gorkha rifles and two battalions of East Bengal rifles of the Mukti Bahini. This force was deployed on the road Jantiapur Silet and exerted pressure on Silet from the north. The activities of E-Force and the actions at Adgram led Pakistan to believe that the attack on Silet would come from the north and east. 
The enemy defenses on these flanks were reinforced, but General Rao had other plans. He assembled his two regular brigades for an advance from the south. 59 Mountain Brigade was concentrated at Dharamnagar and 81 Mountain Brigade at Kalak Kalash Shahar. The enemy had two brigades of 14 division in the sector. 202 Brigade was located at Silet and 313 Brigade at Malbi Bazar. The 3rd Brigade of the division was located at Akhoda. General Rao's aim was to cut off the Pakistani 202 and 313 Brigades, thus preventing their falling back on Bairab Bazar. The advance for capture of Silit was carried on three axes as under. E-Force was to advance along axes Jantiapur, Mukutpur, Darbas, Haripur, Silit. 59 Mountain Brigade was to advance on axes Dharamnagar, Ghazipur, Kalora, Feng Chung, and Silet. 81 Mountain Brigade was to advance along axis Kalash Sahar, Shamsher Nagar, Munshi Bazar, Malvi Bazar, Silet. The advance commenced on the morning of 4th December. E Force reached Karim Nagar on 8th December after brushing aside minor opposition and crossing a number of minor water obstacles. 5-5 five five Gorkha Rifles launched the attack on Karim Nagar. 108 Engineer Regiment was asked to join the assault. Major NM Sharma of Engineers led the attack and seized a major portion of the built-up area of Karim Nagar on December 10. Havaldar Surinder Das of 380 Field Company was awarded the Sena Medal for outstanding dedication in the face of enemy fire while ferrying and bridge construction under enemy fire. Four Rajput led 59 Mountain Brigade advanced and was tasked to capture Ghazipur held by the enemy. The battalion captured and subjected on 4 December after a stiff fight in which it lost nine killed, including the second in command, and had 40, 64 wounded. The battalion was pulled out for a proposed offensive in Dhaka area. Nine guards captured another locality on the flank of Ghazipur on the same night. Four five Gorkhas now advanced and captured Kalora, an important road and rail junction. The fall of Kalora left the enemy in disarray. Six Rajputs caught up with 22 Baluch, the retreating Pakistan battalion, after a 45 kilometer chase at Fengchu Ganj on December 10. 81 Mountain Brigade also commenced its advance on December 4. Their first objective there was an airfield at Shamsher Nagar which was being extremely used, extensively used by the enemy. The task of capturing Shamsher Nagar and the adjoining Chata, Chatalpur Tea Garden was given to 81 Mountain Brigade. To carry out the task, it was essential to bring the guns forward. To make this possible, a Class 18 bridge was constructed by the engineers at Kalash Sahar in Indian territory. Chatalpur Tea Factory was captured by 10 Mahar after a stiff fight on December 5. Shamsher Nagar and its airfield were captured by four Kabao, assisted by two companies of three Punjab, and a two-day battle after a two-day battle on December 6. The airfield was heavily mined and cratered. 81 Mountain Brigade now moved towards Malvi Bazar, which was subjected to heavy shelling and air attacks. The enemy withdrew from Malvi Bazar on the night of December 8-9. Indian forces thus captured Malvi Bazar on December 9, unopposed. They also secured the crossing on Koshiara River on December 10. The news was thus closing on Silit. Radio intercepts indicated that Pakistan was planning to pull out 202 Brigade from Silit and concentrate it at Ashuganj. The Corps commander was intent, intent on preventing this and decided to capture Silit by a heliporn operation. Silet was a district headquarter on both banks of the Surma River with a road and rail bridge. Pakistan was reported to have 202 Brigade for the defense of Silet sector. Later, after surrender, it was also found to have remnants of two brigades as 313 Brigade had fallen back on Silet from Malvi Bazar on December 9. The plan for the Battle of Silet was based on the assumption that the enemy was withdrawing and Silet town was lightly held. The plan of battle was as under. Four five Gurkha rifles were to be airlifted in helicopters and landed north of Surma River, close to the road come rail bridge at Silit. 
Thereafter, the battalion was to capture the bridge, the airfield, and the radio station. 59 Mountain Brigade and E Force were to link up with the battalion within two days. 81 Mountain Brigade was to head for and capture Malvi Bazaar and bottle up all enemy forces in the area. After an aerial reconnaissance on December 7, 4 5 Gurkha rifles, along with a troop of mountain guns and a weak platoon of engineers, were airlifted by 14. MI-4 helicopters and landed at pre-selected spots on the east bank of Surma River at Mirapara, about one and a half kilometers from the bridge. The landing started in the afternoon and took the enemy by surprise. But the, but the area soon came under small arm fire and further landings after the second flight had to be suspended. Only the commanding officer and about 90 men had been landed. The summer held the enemy at bay. The flights were resumed and the rest of the force was landed during the night of December 8 and the bridge was captured. The situation remained very tense for the airborne force for some time. A company of nine guards was landed on night 9 December as reinforcements for the besieged garrison. From 9 December to 12 December, no further landings were possible. Only on 12 December were two helicopters able to get through with some ammunition and evacuated some of the casualties. The battalion remained surrounded on three sides, the fourth side being protected by the river. It is amazing that the battalion was able to survive without any link up for seven days behind the enemy lines. Fortunately, no major attacks were launched on them. It is a mystery as to why the two brigades available at Silet, the Pakistanis could not mount a major attack on the Gurkhas. It is also reported that the engineer platoon with four or five Gurkha rifles took part in an assault on the bridge with the battalion on the night of 7 December. Thus, the battle cries of Jo Bole So Nehal, Sat Sri Akal and Shivaji Maharaj Ki Jai rent the air along with Ayogur Khali. This led the enemy to believe that an entire Indian brigade had landed. To reduce pressure on 4-5 Gorkha rifles, 59 Mountain Brigade and E-Force were told to increase the pressure on the Pakistani defences north and east of Silet. Intense air and artillery attacks were brought on the Silet defences. The linka finally took place on the night of 14 December from the south, when 6 Rajput of 59 Mountain Brigade reached the southern end of the bridge from Fenju Ganj. A column of 81 Mountain Brigade also reached Silet on 15 December. The Silet garrison of the Pakistan Army surrendered to the Indian Army on the morning of 16 December as part of the overall surrender of Pakistani troops in East Pakistan. It consisted of 107 officers, including three brigadiers, 219 junior commissioned officers, and 6,190 other ranks of Pakistan's 202 and 313 brigades and supporting troops. The numbers are far in excess of the assessment of the Indian commanders. During interrogation after surrender, the commander of 313 brigade told that on December 6, he had been ordered by the general officer commanding 14 Pakistan division to pull back and link up with 27 brigade at Akhara Bairo Bazaar. He had expressed his inability to do so as he was under pressure from Munshi Bazaar and the Indian Air Force, which was staffing Malvi Bazaar heavily. As a result, he decided to fall back on Silit. He had reached there on December 7 and his troops followed him a day later. India enjoyed complete air superiority within the first day, few days of the war. Thus, the Indian Air Force was able to attack the Pakistan positions at will without any interference. Movement of vehicle columns was particularly hazardous this situation had a very adverse effect on the morale. Commander 313 Brigade of Pakistan admitted after surrender that he was unable to fall back on Akhara as desired by his divisional commander due to the interdiction by Indian Air Force. The Indian troops succeeded in keeping the enemy off balance by getting behind the defensive positions and isolating them. Very few prepared defenses were assaulted. They were able to threaten rear areas and forced the troops deployed forward defences to withdraw. This indirect approach paid handsome dividends. The enemy was not able to put up a coordinated defensive battle at a brigade level at any stage of the campaign. 
the Indian troops were also able to advance much faster than ex expected by the Pakistani co commanders by quickly clearing the mines laid and bridging the numerous water obstacles. The Corps of Engineers deserve credit for being able to modify the drills and improvise effectively. Battle of Silit is another example of the importance of close coordination and cooperation between infantry and its supporting arms, the artillery engineers and the Indian Air Force in battle. 1971 war in East Pakistan, because of the riverine terrain, it has sometimes been called a sappers war. The troops of 108 Engineer Regiment not only played their part by speedy execution of engineer tasks like clearing mines and constructing bridges and ferries, but also acted in infantry role with a plomb whenever the situation required them to do so. Even the border road organization was successfully integrated in the war effort and played a significant part in rehabilitation of Shamshar, Shamshar Nagar airfield. Battle of Silet also highlights the importance of thorough planning and preparations for any battle. The engineers bridged over 1100 feet of water obstacles and ferry troops and guns over a number of large water obstacles. The bridging equipment and river crossing equipment, track materials along with supplies and ammunition had to be stocked and moved. The logistic planning and preparation of the battle had been excellent. Large scale heli operations were also carried out during this operation for the first time. That the operations could be carried out without any hitch was again due to good preparation and joint training. The division had earned three Mahavi Chakras, 15 Veed Chakras and a number of other gallantry wars during the short but intense fighting. The Pakistani forces suffered the falling casualties in the Silet sector, killed 392, wounded 69 and prisoners taken in battle 175. The losses of 8 Mountain Division were much less in killed 134 but more in wounded 442. Needless to say that the share of 59 brigade in this was the highest and of 4-5 Gurkha rifles amongst infantry units was very high indeed, the unit losing 30 killed and 123 wounded. Silit was an outstanding victory. Two Pakistani brigades remained bottled up at Silit and were unable to take part in the defense of Dhaka. The strength of the surrendered enemy was more than the attacking Indian forces. The troops which took part in this operation were awarded the battle on a Silit. It is true that the surrender of Silit garrison was a part of the surrender of all Pakistan forces in Bangladesh on 16 December 1971. The army did not have to physically capture Silit, but the Indian army was able to get deep inside the enemy territory in most difficult riverine terrain in a short period of seven days and isolate two infantry brigades of the Pakistan army and finally obtain their surrender. With the end of the war, the division moved back to its role in Nagaland. Thank you.